But it's interesting that there do seem to be certain sort of historic moments when there are more people that are really willing to go to the mat uh, and, and yeah. carry through a vision and an idea, and other times when people seem to be sort of spinning their wheels uh, and playing it safe. Uh, and I'm just wondering if we might be at the cusp of a moment musically and in other art forms. I think we are. I, I, I think especially with the, the increase in, in experimental audio techniques, I think the, the producer is starting to become a musician in the band. Mm -hmm. And whereas in, in kind of classic case where you see in a lot of, especially uh, newer R&B, hip hop kind of mm -hmm. vocalist, it, it's an artist. You know, there's one person that fronts a group of musicians that are completely interchangeable. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're going to start seeing are groups of people who are bound together as a as a band, and I think you're going to see the producer become a member of that, where he uh, kind right. of experiments, kind of like I think of like the Flaming Lips, or I kind of experiment with that. That's a very good idea. That's a very good idea. I mean, there are certain people who I mean, I think on a different level. I mean, when you think of producer, there's a sort of like pop daddy image. But I definitely think of like Rick Rubin, who yeah. is the most. I mean, he basically. Does he still he basically started Def Jam Records, yeah. and he is a very <laughs> mysterious figure. Um, but he is one of literally the best record producers. Every band is tries to get him because he delivers. He he won a Grammy for for producing Slayer and then for producing Christina Aguilera within in the same the yeah. same uh, ceremony. And <laughs> I think well, and I think that that brings us back to the, what we discussed at the head. I think as you see the producer become part of the band, I think yes. you're going to see the producer become less part of the industry. The mm -hmm. producer won't be so industrious as much as we want this guy to come and we want him to run our sound at this gig because if he runs our sound at this gig, it's going to sound like it did on our album that we cut on our MacBook Pro and sent out to all these people. And, and, he's, and moreover, I think I tell Jeremy this, the, the sound engineer is going to be a little bit more the sound designer, but basically that's the person who knows what to do and this thing doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's so many, man, I've seen, it's, it's a train oh, wreck. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. so many tech, uh, you know, I don't say digital bands, but so many You're bands. talking about, about live performances. Live performances. Yes. You know, right. what do we do when this won't communicate with that? What do we do? Because especially when you're a touring band, you don't know what you're walking into. Yeah. I mean, you could be, I mean, you, the more you tour, the more prepared you are to deal with whatever, you know, amenities or lack thereof is there, but you want somebody who knows how to, you know, who, who knows when we need this kind of snake or when we need this kind of adapter or, you know, how to EQ, you know, that's going to be, I am very interested in seeing the rise of the tinkerer again, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. sort of a, you know, that's what, that's the guy who's not classically trained but knows more stuff than the guy who is. Exactly. Which is different from the roadie, right? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Well, also that, the, just the general I'm very interested in the steampunk subculture and what's going on with that right now. But you know, the art of 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 wondrously tweaking and 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 and, and reconstructing and taking pieces, you know, whether be they old or new, and making making something new from them, and not not following the not following the template. And I think that's going to be the future of the roadie, because right now the yeah. roadie is the guy who doesn't quite know know enough to be with the electronic scene, so he carries the boxes and he learns as he goes. Yeah. Well, in that sense, he's learning as he goes, and he's fixing this information but together. As if, but as the musicians become more um, more tech proficient, um, thus the sound engineers mm -hmm. have to be even even better. Yeah, why well, have a sound engineer if I can do it myself from the stage? More, yeah, and then, yeah, and that's you know. Yeah, I mean, and that's what you see a lot of jazz guys do. Oh, they yeah. don't have a lot of guys won't have sound engineers unless they're really big names. They'll have, you know, they'll have a soundboard on stage, and your horn player or your vocalist will know how to EQ herself because that's something you don't want to switch. Because the danger in not having your own sound guy is having to use the house guy, and if you have to use oh, the house yeah, guy, yeah. the house guy might be an idiot. That's how. Well, that's how my dear gets. You know, he works yeah. as a, he's a sound engineer at a jazz school, and basically, mm -hmm. you know. He's very good at his job, and they're like, please, oh, please, we're going on tour, will you please come with Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, so if you don't have your own sound guy, then you have, you're at the mercy of their sound guy, unless you become one. Yeah. And so and a lot complete, of jazz guys, the folks yeah. will use their own, they'll do their own EQing. Do that on stage, not just your mind. Uh, we can have that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but that, that, that's a very, well, that is a quite interesting sort of internal question. Yeah. Right? And what's happened? Where are the sites of innovation and mm -hmm. new kinds of expertise that are it's Just new ways developing. of making do. It's really, it's one thing I just read in Guardian, I posted it on my own Facebook thing, was that the, you know, the, the idea that the new revolution will be electro 
do-it-yourself and female. Mm. And I thought this was very interesting, mm. Mm. particularly because there are a lot of, uh, we've got, I think we've gotten very, very saturated with electronic music. It sounds great, mm. it's wonderful, it's polished, it's good. It's really, really, you can do some really creative things with it and still work within the template. And it's, it's, it's fun. Um, but it is, uh, there are a lot of female artists who are doing it themselves, literally. Mm -hmm. They're their own producers, whether it be MIA or before that, Bjork. Mm -hmm. Bjork was a famous musician. She's known for being, you know, an entity, but she actually does all of her, most of her own uh, programming. Mm -hmm. But everybody's not just, since she's this whimsical, lovely person, that she's not intelligent enough to. No, no she's a technological giant. Yeah, she's artist. really amazing. When you talk about, when you talk about electronic music in modern innovation, Bjork is someone that you have to talk about. Yeah. Because, I mean, apart from, because you have, of course, all of your experimental electronic people. Yeah. But for the people who are kind of she she's exactly. another one who is a very, you know, she's very, very innovative and, you know, conceptually and technically as well. But, you know, mm -hmm. nobody knows her. They know, you know, I'm trying, trying to think about her. They're all going to be out of my head. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, it's just it's just an instance of taking that extremely experimental mm -hmm. and trying to funnel it into the pop music because that's what a lot of your a lot of producers are doing. You know, producers, especially the ones that that I know that go to Berkeley, instead are, are doing some really out there experimental stuff. Yeah. And then they're just taking and saying, you know, they're playing, you know, they're touring with a the punk band. They're saying, why don't you guys try this? That's it's just, it's yeah. just crazy. But let's try it. And that's how I think that's how you start to see innovation take place is when. Things start to collide with when each somebody, other. yeah, and whether that be a producer from the outside, because you uh, to acknowledge the power of the producer, but I'll, or if that's happening within the band, I think dynamics within bands, um, new bands are developing, seems very, very democratic. Mm -hmm. Not my own necessarily, but <laughs> you know, in or you know, maybe it's just very, very democratic, and nobody can say, you know, let's try this, let's do this, because there isn't time. Especially a friend of mine just recorded a great, great album. Um, and they did it um, tri-coastally. They did. They had um, some. Of it, some of it was recorded in um, L.A. Some of it was recorded here in Boston. Some of it was recorded in Germany. And they mixed it all together. And just everybody basically picked their own takes and sent them. Mm -hmm. so the end product is amazing. It really, really is great. But I mean, if that's. I mean, if you think about that. If it's. If that format is applied to other people, that can go disastrously so quick. And it gets, you know, I, I think it's good enough. Why do you think, you know, why don't you think it's good enough? Mm -hmm. You know, or if I say it's good enough, you know, that's what, you know. Well, that's almost the immediate reaction to the art, uh, artist movement. There, in the artist movement, there's one person that dictates the interchangeable band. Mm. And now, as a, as a result of that, as, a, as a, almost a uh, revolt against that, you have the band that wants to be the artist. The, the four people that want to be the single collective one person. And I, yeah, I mean, that's the thing I think we're going, you're going, going to that, which is a good thing, is that by, you know, it, the more revolutionary thing to do is to be a single entity, mm -hmm. you know, whereas opposed to... An being, avatar for musicality. Ad, exactly. You know, kind of yeah, as opposed to, you know, I look around and I hear, I'm like, I don't hear, I don't hear a Tori Moss or somebody who, like, mm -hmm. or, you know, or an instance or something I heard that was a oh my god, that, that's it, that's me, that's what I want to, you know, I'm going to listen to it so many times. Yeah. You know, there's that sort of, I'm missing that, and I mean, I'm a little bit older, so maybe, you know, I'm not 14 mm -hmm. anymore, so maybe that's part of it. it takes a little but when I, when I do listen to things, I'm like, it's, it, it's almost like, the music I'm hearing, whether it be college radio or anything, almost has a more, it's almost more, Product, a, a modern product, meaning a product of modernity, meaning like if we make it sound more simple and care, you know, free and careless and childlike almost, that makes it better than if we do something that's edgy and sophisticated and going to offend people a little bit and they're not going to get it the first time, but the, it'll, the, it'll be fine. It's but and that's, and that's a case of the marketing of music, because if they don't get it the first time, they're is not going to buy it. Is it? I mean, is it? Because I, I, mean, I, I feel like it's marketing, but it also, I mean, maybe people don't know how to write complicated songs or don't want to write complicated songs anymore. Yeah, but or as, then as a cultural theorist, the question you have to ask though is why? Why don't they want to write these complicated songs? And what atmosphere because, is it and honestly, why not Because now? we were so saturated in the late 90s with the super confessional songwriters that mm -hmm. I kind of want to put my eyes out, but oh my <laughs> god. You know what I mean? There's a sense of if I say it, it's good. Mm -hmm. 